Hey yo, it's Crash Owl back again with another video. Today we're going to be trying a unique type of challenge. Can you beat Pokemon White with only Route 1 Pokemon? I'll be honest, it's more like early game only, but Route 1 sounds better. The viable Pokemon are our starter because it's the first thing we get, Lollipop and Patrack because they're both on Route 1, one of the Elemental Monkeys because they're designed to be early game teammates, Purloin because it fits the Route 1 Dark type prototype, Pit of because it's the regional bird, Blitzel because it's the early game electric type prototype, and that's it. The rules are on the screen and also in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new, and without any further ado, let's see if we can beat Pokemon White with only Route 1 only. I start off with picking a boy and naming myself Spen. We get introduced to Charon by Anka, and we choose our starter. I choose Tepic. Afterwards, we have to battle our new rivals, where I spam tackle on them both and win both battles with ease. My room gets absolutely murked and my poor mother has to clean it. Sorry mom. I then go to Bianca's house where I walk in on some family drama. Her old man had one too many beers and was going off the hook. Anyways, me and the gang meet up to get the Pokédex from Professor Juniper. I name our pet pig BLT and we finally get to go on Route 1, where I find a Pat Trat and name him McNugget. I also catch a Lily Pup and name her Pepperoni. Afterwards, we run into some green-haired guy trying to hold his own Trump rally, but fails miserably. And then his posh son wants to battle us, and I beat him and his stupid cat. Then I set off on Route 2, where I'm rudely interrupted by my mother, who gives me my shoes. I don't know why I was going around barefoot before, but it's alright. I then encounter my next encounter, which is Pearly. I name it Cookie. Man, I love eating cookies, if you know what I mean. At the end of the route, I'm challenged by Bianca, again where I beat her with BLT and barbecue her snivy. I then go to the dream yard to get our next team member, Pan Sage. I name him Broccoli and challenge Charon. Other than Purloin getting water gum from assist and getting BLT low, he was pretty easy. I then go to the gym. I don't know why, but I love the look of this gym. So homely and nice. I then make quick work of the gym trainers and go and challenge Crest. Usually this battle's pretty difficult, but I have a plan in mind. I start off with BLT and destroy Cress's Lillipub. Then when Panpour comes out, I switch into Broccoli to completely outmatch his stupid water monkey. After winning this gym, I get the trio badge and the workup TM. I then head back to the dream yard where I have to t face Team Plasma for the first time. They were light work and then I got to watch them get tormented by Musharna using their nightmares against them. Some weird scientist lady then takes the dream mist and runs off with it to do god knows what. I then go to route 3 to get my new encounters. First of which being a pit of and I named him bird dog. Secondly was a blitzel and I named him steak. And officially that's all the encounters I can get for this entire run. Me and Sharon then have to take down some plasma punks and BLT evolves into a pretty pig knight. I then head off to Nacreen City. I wanted to go into the gym but I was stopped by Posh Boy N. Other than BLT almost dying and living on 2 HP, he was pretty easy. W clutch by BLT though. Whilst training up for the gym I had many Pokemon involved. Patrat into Watchhog, Lilypup into Hurtier, and Purloin into Lipard. I then take on Lenora who's one of the hardest gym battles in this game. I start off with McNuggets, who takes down her Herdier and uses Detect to shut down her Retaliate shenanigans. I then try to switch to Pepperoni and finish it off with a few bites. I get the Basic Badge and Retaliate TM upon winning. I go outside to see some commotion happen because some Plasma Grunt stole some Fossil Skull. He took off to Pinwheel Forest and I have to chase after him and beat him up. While speeding him up, Pitup evolves into Tranquil. Awesome. I get the skull back and give it back to Lenora. I then get to go on the beautiful Sky Arrow Bridge. This game has incredible graphics for launching on the DS. As a kid I was very amazed by the look of this bridge. I make it to Castilia City where I have to gas out Getsis from an apartment like a cockroach. Be gone, thought! Then I get a leaf stone from a rando scientist that evolved broccoli into a simi sage. Quickly I just wanted to mention that I really like the elemental monkeys and I think that they're very overhated. Anyways, 
BLT goes for a defense curl rollout strategy and rolls out all these pests. Bug gives us the insect badge and the struggle bug TM for winning. I then have to take on Sharon and Bianca back to back, first of which being Bianca. She doesn't really and never really stands a chance against me as I destroy her old team while taking minimal damage. Awesome. I then take on Charon, who is only a little troublesome because I go for a risky rollout with BLT, but he ends up getting the job done. Let's go BLT. And then takes us on a date, where we're on a Ferris wheel and then he drops the I'm the king of Team Plasma. Like whoa buddy, wait till the third date at least to tell me this. Do men nowadays even know manners? Either way, I battle him and other than a few close calls. I take him down and he goes on about how much he loves me or something. I don't know, it's kind of zoned out. Anyways, then I have to watch Bianca and her dad fight like an old married couple. Alisa at least handles the drama and saves me from doing it. Sheesh. While I was training for the gym battle, Blitzel evolves into Zeb Striker. Man, I love Zeb Striker. It's such a cool mon. I just wish he wasn't a physical attacker. Then I take on Elisa, where I use Zeb Strika's Lightning Rod ability to shut down her Immobile Vault switch strategies. She then manually switches into Zeb Strika, and I switch to Pepperoni. I finish her Zeb Strika off with a few digs. I switch back to Steak when her new Immobile comes in. I kill both of her Immobiles while getting low with Neutral Spark. I get the Vault Badge and Vault Switch TM upon winning. Then I have to battle Charon again. There's so many rival battles in this game. Steak and BLT make quick work of this pretty boy. No problems here. Then I get to go across the Charizard Bridge, or the Drift Rail Bridge if you're a loser. Which the cutscene of it coming together is actually pretty sick. I quickly stop and try to get an Expert Belt, but apparently I'm not good enough for it. Like. Anyways, I find these plasma bolzos in a frozen solid in a freezer and have the popo take him to jail. Gets this freeze them after giving the popo some sob story. Man, get these thugs out of here. I take on Drift Fail Gym, which wasn't an eventful battle. However, I was having a lot of recording issues around this time and the gym battle footage got corrupted. I tried to salvage as much clips as I can from the footage, uh, but it was pretty quick. Luckily, we didn't have any close calls or any deaths, so it didn't matter anyway, but just a little note to you guys, I'm sorry. After the gym, since a bunch of my Pokemon were very close to evolving, I trained them up, and we have some new evolutions. Hurtier evolved into a good boy Scoutlin, and Tranquil evolved into an Unpheasant, an also overrated Pokemon, but just the male one though. The female one can be cooked in a KFC deep fryer. Get that thing away from me! Clay clears the way to charge Scone Cave so I can enter. I clear out the Plasma Grunts and take on N. The fight was really easy when I had BLT on my side. Having super effective moves for basically every member on his team because Charge Scone Cave is full of steel, rock, and even grass types with Pharaoh Seed. BLT makes N his dog and then we head out to Celestial Tower where I go to the top. After I ring this bell, Skyla starts flirting with me. I mean, I'm not complaining. Funny enough, I had a huge crush on Skyla as a kid. Like, damn. Anyways, I then take her on in battle. Stakes gets a clean sweep on her. After a few sparks, he beats all of her stupid birds, even Swana. Ugh, that thing gave me nightmares. She gives me the jet badge and acrobatics TM after I win. Stake then tells all my darkest secrets to end. Like, what the hell, dude? I was gonna tell this guy after the third date, you know, that's what I was waiting for. Like, why are you, why are you snitching me out like that? I then have to take on Sharon again. Ugh, I'm getting sick of these rival battles. And I beat him again. After some good work from the entire team, everybody got on the pitch and, you know, did some good. I then make it to Twist Mountain. Where it's winter, so it's actually really easy to navigate, which saves me a lot of time. It also looks really nice. 
I make it to the end relatively quickly and I immediately went to the gym the second I made it to Accessoris City. And while fighting the trainers, BLT evolves into the beastly Embor. He's so sick. I love Embor. He's probably my favorite fire fighting starter. I then challenge Bryson, who's a walk in the park after another rollout strat. We defense curled at the beginning and there was a little bit of resistance because of the defense boost from Vanillish, but we ended up making it through with a couple rollouts and then a heat crash on his cryogonal. We get the freeze badge and frostbeth TM upon winning. I then head off to Dragon Spiral Tower where I think this dialogue of our player is the first official dialogue in all the main series of the actual player character. It's just our character thinking about like the big explosion on the roof but it's still pretty sick isn't it? I make it to the top where I see N cheating on me with a big white dragon. I knew it! He's been acting so off recently. Ugh, the audacity of this posh boy. I then go to the desert resort to let off some steam by beating up all his friends and smashing them and all their Pokemon into the ground. I also ended up telling his father on him. I have to go back to Nacreen City Museum to get the Dark Stone. Ha, I get a big black dragon and N doesn't. Take that, punk. I then take on Bianca for the final time. She's as easy as ever. With most of my team touching the battlefield and contrib contributing to Bianca's demise, we destroyed her. And she went home and cried to her dad about it, who was already telling her she wasn't ever going to be good enough to be a trainer. Well, th enjoy the trauma, Bianca. <laughs> I then cross the two blind bridge and I'm approached by Getsis, who tells me to get back with his son. I tell him, nah man, I don't swing that way, and I refuse his offer. I then get assaulted the moment I get out of the bridge. What the frick, dude? I then witness another public indoctrinating. Yuck. Why do these guys gotta do this? No one's joining you, PETA. I challenge the final gym leader, Iris. Throughout the gym, I just want to mention, I love Stoutland. He was the MVP for this gym. I went to the move reminder and taught him Ice Fang so we can sweep through it. And then I use that same strategy here. He gets all worked up and then slays her scary dragons with Ice Fang. Without Stoutland, I don't think we would have won this playthrough, honestly. I got the Legend Badge and Dragon Tail TM upon winning. I set off to go to the Victory Road. I'm then interrupted by Juniper, who gives me the Master Ball after I told her I regretted going out on my journey. I didn't. I was just spamming through the dialogue and didn't realize that you, your default option was yes for that question. Either way, Master Ball, sweet! I then take on Sharon for the final time. Thank the lord, I'm getting really sick and tired of battling this pretty boy. The battle went swimmingly. There, there was one close call on BLT because of another risky rollout play, but we're all good in the end. I then go to the badge check, which is probably the coolest and best badge check in the series. It's so cool. I love how all the areas reflect their corresponding gyms. And after a quick trek through the victory road once I arrived there, with minimal danger, there wasn't really much deaths, there wasn't any deaths to be fair, and not much damage to my Pokemon, I make it to the Pokemon League. The champions! Uh, after a lot of pa preparation, I start off with taking on Grimsley. He starts with a Scrafty and I start with Broccoli. Broccoli takes him out in a few acrobatics and baits out Bisharp. I switch to BLT on an X Scissor and then smash him with a 4x super effective hammer arm. Goodbye Felicia. He then sends out Crocodile. I then switch into Bird Dog on an Earthquake. Bird Dog's immune to it, so he takes no damage. Bird Dog then finishes him off with a few returns. Perfect. He then sells out Light Bard, who dies to a crit return. See ya! I then take on Caitlyn. I don't think the rest of these Elite Four battles are going to be as easy as that one. She starts with Reuniclus. I start with Pepperoni. I take 
her Reuniclus down with a few crunches as she switches to Sigilyph. I kill Sigilyph with a few more crunches. She then sends out Gothitelle. I'm low, so I switch into Cookie. I'm immune to the Psychic Attack, and then come in and hit her with a Fake Out. I end up finishing her off with a few Night Slashes, and her final Pokemon is Mushina, who then, again, suffers the same fate as Gothitelle, getting t uh, taken out with a few Night Slashes, winning me the fight. The next Elite Four member I take on is Chantel. She starts with a Cough of Grievous, and I start with Cookie. I take out that Coffin with a Night Slash, after a little bit of resistance, of course. She then sends out Go Golurk. I'm not staying in because Golurk has Brick Break. So I switch into Broccoli and a Brick Break. He takes Golurk out with a Seed Bomb right after. After a little bit of resistance and a close call, but whatever. This spits out Chandelure. This is the most risky Pokemon in the Elite Four. I switch out into Cookie on a Psychic. Cookie gets a big Night Slash off before being sacked. Rest in peace, Cookie. Our first death of the run. I had no other option. I'm sorry, guys. But this allows me to switch into Pepperoni, completely safe, who gets hit with a, a Fire Blast and Burn, but can finish him off with a Crunch. Her final Pokemon is Jellicent, who isn't really much big of a deal. I switch into Steak and end the battle off with a big Spark. Now, on to the last and final Elite Four member, Marshall. He's the scariest since all of his Pokemon can take care of Bird Dog, which is supposed to be, you know, the counter to him. Either way, I start with Bird Dog, and he starts with Throat. Keep in mind, all his Pokemon have a Rock move. I then hit it with a, a Crit Fly, and he sends in Sock right after I kill off Throat. Sock survives a Fly due to Sturdy, and then he heals. He ends up su surviving again due to Sturdy and hits another Stone Edge after we already take one and kills off Bird Dog. Rest in peace, you're a real trooper Bird Dog. I then send in Stake who finishes him off with a Wild Charge. I switch into BLT to finish his Conkeldur off uh, that he then switches in. Conkeldur has a huge attack stat and is a complete monster so BLT was the only one who could do this. His final Pokemon is a Mian Chao. I switch into Pepperoni, who intimidates, lowers his attack, and can outspeed and finish the battle with Return. Now to the champion. Oh wait, Posh Boy N just beat him, so now N is the champion. Well, well I have to battle this Posh Boy. Great. N's castle sprouts out of the ground in the most epic fashion. How is this even possible? It's completely beyond me. But I'm forced to enter, and I'm almost jumped by N's gang. The thugs pulled up on me. What am I gonna do? Thankfully, the gym leaders come to my rescue and got me covered, so we're good. I traverse the castle, and I'm able to access the PC. I deposit our fallen brothers. Rest in peace to Bird, Dog, and Cookie. Then I bring back the OG, McNugget. He's gonna be the clutch, I'm telling you. I then leave the castle to go train because for one McNugget's really underleveled, for two I can go up to 52 now, and also just to get some items and TMs that might be useful for this final battle. I come back and guess this tells me how I could rule the world if I just got back with his stinky son. No, I refuse again and now I have to fight end. Before I do, I'm forced to catch Zekrom. And since I'm not using hacks in this playthrough, I'm forced to add them to my party. I like this for a normal playthrough, but for Nuzlocke's like this and certain Pokemon challenges, this is annoying. So, the only thing I'll do with Zekrom is have an honor ba battle with Reshiram, which stupid Zekrom loses. You stupid dragon, you were supposed to make N jealous. Like, come on, man. Luck luckily enough, I'm able to take out the rest of his team up until Archeops, where I realized my recording ended up crashing while I was in the battle. Which is really unfortunate, but you can, you guys can see that I wasn't cheating, all my Pokemon are still alive, some are low, because it was pretty close. I mostly used uh, type advantages to my advantage, and super effective moves on certain Pokemon, like for example Broccoli had a wider range of moves 
such as Dig, Shadow Claw, Seed Bomb, and Acrobatics uh, to take care of certain Pokemon in Ed's party. But you guys can see, I'm not cheating. My recording just got corrupted and crashed, which upset me, but you know, we're still here. All my Pokemon are still alive. I ended up sending in Stake into Archeops, but he wasn't doing as good as I thought he would. So I end up Vault switching out of there and sending Archeops into Defeatist. I then send out McNugget to finish him off with a Stab Return and beat Posh Boy N. Suck it, you green-haired weirdo. His father then gets so mad that he isn't getting grandchildren that he ends up fighting me. Like, jeez, chill out, old man. There's other fish in the sea. Has no one told you that? Well, maybe not, because your son is adopted. You don't have any biological children. Hmm. Explains a lot about him. I'm forced to start with Zekrom, so I spam S Slash to do nothing against his Kofagrigus and get him killed again. I then send out Pepperoni to use Crunch, but gets very low to Toxic and Protect and Stall from this stupid Coffin guy. Whoever at Game Freak decided to give Kofagrigus this move is just purely evil. Getsis then sends out Hydragon, who kills Pepperoni. I send out BLT, who gets hit by a huge Surf, but finds a way to survive and Okos it with a huge Hammer Arm. Oko meaning one hit KO. W, BLT Clutch again. I love BLT. Not just the sandwich, but also the Pokemon. He then sends out Bufalant. I switch into McNuggets for return damage and a sacking. I'm sorry McNuggets, but I need you you just serve this purpose because you're not strong enough. I then can send out Stake to finish it off. Or not, Stake barely doesn't kill him and gets obliterated by Head Smash. Stake, you are so good. What the hell, man? I send in Broccoli to finish off this dumb bull and then he sends out Seismitoad. Perfect. Seed Bomb destroys that stupid pimp toad and busts his pimple. Pause. He then sends out Electros, who gets hit with a big seed bomb. Two big seed bombs, actually. But unfortunately, it's not enough, and Broccoli gets killed off. I, I have to send in BLT, who's already pretty low, so I don't think this run is going to go very well. BLT elim eliminates Electros with a heat crash. This was strategical because I didn't want a speed lower from Hammer Arm. Gessis then sends out the final Pokemon of this run, Bisharp. Somehow, through a miracle, it's a Christmas miracle, BLT outspeeds him and smashes him with a hammer arm. I thought Embor was slow. BLT wins us the, uh, the run, wins us the playthrough, and obviously is the MVP, BLT. This guy saved the whole run. I don't think we were winning if he didn't outspeed there. It was so close, it was down to the wire. BLT was dead to that, to Bisharp. Bisharp didn't have any great moves for BLT, but he was so low, I don't think he would have survived anything. So, thank you BLT. I can't believe I made it through that last battle, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. This was a really fun playthrough. It was like a puzzle, especially for these Elite Four members and N and Getsis. I didn't even think it was possible for me to win it. I was spent hours strategizing, doing calculations, training up. But, you know, it all worked out in the end, which I'm very grateful for. So, yes, it is possible to beat Pokemon White with only using Route 1 Pokemon or early game Pokemon. So please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and also check out the, my other channels linked in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a very long time to record, many hours of recording, editing, and a lot of effort. So I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys all for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out and have a great day.